Welcome. Our topic today is bacterial pneumonia. Streptococcus pneumoniae is a gram-positive diplococcus. Diplo meaning it occurs in pairs. Several characteristics make this bacteria quite virulent. First, Streptococcus pneumoniae has at least 90 serotypes. It also has a polysaccharide capsule, which makes it resistant to phagocytosis. Finally, it secretes a toxin called pneumolysin which forms pores in eukaryotic cells, causing them to lyse. Streptococcus pneumoniae or pneumococcus are taken into the upper respiratory tract by aerosol inhalation. They use fibrillar structures or pili to adhere to epithelial cells to colonize the nasopharynx. About 50% of healthy adults at any given time have colonization, which usually remains for four to six weeks. There is a greater percentage of colonization among children, smokers, and nursing home residents. Pneumococcal pneumonia is more likely when a large amount of pneumococcus is inhaled or aspirated into the respiratory tract, which can overwhelm host defense mechanisms. Gaining access to the lower respiratory tract the pneumococcus can enter and infect cells of the alveoli, especially type 2 pneumocytes. The streptococcus bacteria use choline-containing ligands, including CBPA and PSPA, to attach to platelet-activating factor receptors on type 2 pneumocytes. If the bacteria gain access to the bloodstream, C-reactive protein, or CRP, produced by the liver acts as an opsonin by binding to the bacteria to enhance phagocytosis. Many of these opsonized bacteria are phagocytosed in the spleen by splenic macrophages. In addition to infecting the alveolar epithelial cells like type 2 pneumocytes, the bacteria will also multiply in the alveoli. They may also invade adjacent alveoli by passing through the pores of cone. The bacteria secrete a nasty cytotoxin called pneumolysin, which binds to cholesterol in the plasma membranes of host cells to form holes and cause cell lysis. Pneumolysin also triggers the bacteria to divide inside the alveoli and also promotes the penetration of the bacteria into the lung interstitium and into the blood. This invasion of the alveoli triggers an inflammatory response as an alveolar macrophages or dust cells use toll-like receptors to recognize pattern-associated molecular patterns on the surface of the bacteria. This interaction triggers the dust cells to produce cytokines, like TNF-alpha and IL-1, which further the inflammatory response and leads to lung capillary endothelial cell retraction, making the capillaries leaky. It also increases the gaps between the type 1 pneumocytes of the alveoli. These actions permit proteins from the blood to enter the alveoli, which in turn draws water into the alveoli, causing edema, which compromises gas exchange across the respiratory membrane. This inflammation also brings in complement proteins for opsonization, bacterial lysis, as well as phagocytes like neutrophils and additional macrophages. Due to the inflammatory response, exudate, composed of fluid, protein, bacteria, and white blood cells, collects inside the alveoli. The host immune responses may lead to full resolution of the infection or lung abscesses, described as necrotic liquefaction and cavity formation in lung tissue, composed of necrotic debris and fluid from the bacterial infection. Here now is an animated summary of the pathogenesis of bacterial pneumonia. Thanks for watching.